Hey, this is book two, chapter six, part three. We got there in the early morning chill on a Harley Freddie had at the time. I held on tight, my arms around him, threading the morning commute, talking, laughing, cheerful and melodic bursts into cool and receptive air. We were to meet Bless for coffee next door. Now my head dissolved in a warm glow around me. The scattered voices of women like birds vanished as the water rose above the canals of my ears. And though I wasn't smiling, it was only because my face, so content, peeled off me and sank, rocking then spinning slowly down to the granite floor of the basin. And while I wasn't looking, one of my eyes popped out from under the lid and floated across the surface like a buoy marker and nested in some soap suds. And as my mind marveled over the fresh instance of friendship tingling all over my body, Freddy uncomfortably shifted on the charcoal seat cushions not ten yards away, a Mademoiselle magazine in his hands to hide behind, the image of a gorgeous Parisian cover model, unimpressive to him now. His eyes moved hawkishly about the room to get a glimpse of me, raising him up with them to see down the middle aisle of women at work, past the smoking mirrors and chirping, to the hollow at the back. My brain matter unraveled into a labyrinthine, interpretive, submersive dance. Seemed like half of eternity lost. Then swept away I was to thoughtless clarity by the sudden opening of the drain, the lifting of my head, watery fingers of my locks gripping the back of my neck, half-smile pinioned to my lips, eyeball slipping back under lashes and lid, the sound of birds chirping. Only the thoughts had flushed on down the drain. For what use were thoughts any more? The stylist was telling me something, blown away by a hairdryer gun on high heat, posits and remarks littering the floor. My body still tingling, the glow had not left me, just cooling in air along with my hair. I could not now help my eyes from lifting me up in the chair as they circled around and found Freddy in there, a tough black leathered man among swans, waiting for me so we could go next door and meet dear Bless for coffee where she could sing praises over my hair and I could sit there and blush over my espresso and take it. I found in them, Freddy and Bless, such friends as I never knew I could have and needed back then when life was no more than a blur and I would lay down my life for them, truly. One day back on Adeline, Freddie was in a race against time, working on an abandoned pickup truck broke down in the street. He almost always won. He would drive his van back and forth from west to east Oakland to get any tools or supplies he stored there in a small shed I knew all too well. It was the first place I landed in this godforsaken town. He had to get the cars off the street before the tickets and masks and the boot was placed and the vehicle towed to an impound yard. He worked hard, Freddy. He worked because working made him feel good. Sometimes he spent hours working on a car that needed a lot of TLC, maybe even engine work, but he wanted the car so bad or knew someone who would pay him well for it, having, of course, checked the tags to make sure it wasn't stolen and would come one day to find it gone and all his effort up in smoke. But he loved fixing cars anyway, so nothing lost, no matter how it turned out. And he cherished having me and Bless around. We could look out for him, keep his spirits up. And what with his tools and jacks and jumpers on, the cops rarely had a quarrel with him so long as he appeared to genuinely be working on a vehicle. And it couldn't hurt if we killed him with our long legs and smiles. Today it was just me and some other girl. Freddy got out from under and took breaks resting with us in the van, telling stories between cars. The girl was giving him a back rub, one of Uma's girls, I believe. Her hands so small she could hardly make an impression, particularly if she was going to save her nails. To be honest, I don't understand why you'd even try to give someone a back rub with nails like that. You can't put anything into it. My nails beds were flush with fingers so I could break them up good, which is what he needed. Maybe I came off a little jealous, but I'm only being practical. Whatever nails I grew faced a life colliding with skin and pavement, denim, antique.